Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to this new episode of Dark is In. Uh, my name is Hassan Naimat. I'm a staff physician at Cleveland Clinic Abu Dhabi. Uh, I'm the director of the pulmonary hypertension program uh, here. And before I joined uh, Cleveland Clinic Abu Dhabi in 2022, I was the director of the pulmonary hypertension uh, program at the University of Florida. I've been taking care of patients with pulmonary hypertension for the last 18 years. Um, and today's uh, podcast is going to be about pulmonary hypertension. And uh, I'm excited uh, today to introduce my partner and colleague, uh, Dr. Manu Agarwal, staff physician uh, in the Division of Cardiology, uh, to discuss this uh, disease. Uh, Manu? Thank you so much, Dr. Hassan. I'm, uh, I'm Dr. Manu Agarwal. I'm one of the consultant physicians uh, in uh, Heart Vascular Thoracic Institute. And I've been involved in the field of pulmonary hypertension for more than 10 years through my work in Boston at Brigham and Women's Hospital and University of California, Los Angeles. Um, the field has grown. So Dr. Hassan, why don't you briefly describe what is pulmonary hypertension? Excellent, thank you, thank you. So uh, pulmonary hypertension, as you know, and I would like to kind of introduce that to the audience. So pulmonary hypertension is a disease in which the pressure in the pulmonary artery is higher than normal. And uh, there are many different diseases or condition can cause pulmonary hypertension. One of the challenging thing about this disease is very hard to diagnose. A lot of patients present with very nonspecific symptoms, most often shortness of breath. And they continue to have the symptoms for years before a diagnosis is confirmed. Despite a lot of uh, uh, advancement in the diagnosis, still there is a lot of delay in diagnosing this disease uh, based on recent studies. And uh, the disease, if left and treated, uh, can lead to right heart failure and death. Uh, 20, 25 years ago, uh, the average survival of patients with pulmonary hypertension is two to three years. Um, and that's as bad as any other disease like cancer, even worse than cancer. Luckily, in the last 20 years, tremendous advancement in understanding of the disease and treatment became available. And we are lucky to be able to practice and treat this disease uh, uh, in the United Arab Emirates and uh, provide care to these patients. And uh, in general, this is a rare disease. It's not a common disease, to be honest with you. It's uh, one uh, around 15 per million. So my best estimate for the number of patients within the United Arab Emirates around, uh, around five to 600 patients with actual this type of disease that we'll be talking about, which is pulmonary arterial hypertension. Having said that, as I said, the disease is difficult to diagnose. Uh, you guys, you as cardiologists, play a major role in the diagnosis of this disease. Can you walk us through the, the diagnostic workup and the importance of specific tests that can be done in certain places? Thanks a lot. Yeah, that's, a, that's an excellent brief description of uh, the pathology of pulmonary hypertension. So the, everything, as you know, in the hospital and for the patients begins in the clinic with their assessment, talking to them, taking their history, which is followed by the test, which are uh, which we specifically have expertise at Cleveland Clinic Abu Dhabi, namely 2D echocardiography, 3D echocardiography with the contrast enhancing agent, transesophageal echocardiography, uh, different biomarkers panels that can be ordered, and then specific tests such as uh, invasive tests, uh, right heart catheterization uh, at rest in the supine position, patient, patient lying flat, or and then unmasking the pathology and the disease by challenging them, challenging them with exercise or with volume challenge. Um, in addition to that, when it comes to the imaging, we have a comprehensive cross-sectional imaging program here at Cleveland Clinic Abu Dhabi that includes cardiac MRI, uh, cardiac CT, and uh, uh, the cardiac nuclear imaging section also that we work very closely with. In addition to that, there are other uh, more pulmonary medicine specific uh, modalities in the testing. Uh, can you briefly describe about that? Excellent, and that's the key issue. Sometime uh, when a patient is told that you have pulmonary hypertension, it's very often based on echocardiogram. And unfortunately, this is not good enough. We need an accurate diagnosis. There are many different types of pulmonary hypertension, and the treatment of these conditions different depending on the type of the disease. So we need to have a specific diagnosis. So just to say you have pulmonary hypertension is like you have shortness of breath. It doesn't really give you a, a, an accurate, meaningful 
diagnosis that requires specific treatment. So as you, you know, described, there are a lot of advanced testing that we can provide here at Cleveland Clinic Abu Dhabi, uh, which is not really available in many other places in the country, uh, that we are really expert in providing that level of diagnosis. When it comes to the lung side, because this is a disease, as I said, it falls between different specialty between cardiology and pulmonologists. They need to work together to come up with the accurate diagnosis. As you said, we we count on my you know our cardiology colleague to do their part and we do our part. That includes specific uh, testing from lung function test to imaging of the lung with a CT scan or CAT scan of the chest. And we do a lung function test. We do some walking tests to assess their need for oxygen. All of this information, we gather them together and we figure out based on all that information what type of pulmonary hypertension we're dealing with. Because once we define it, we can accurately treat the disease. And uh, so w when, when we talk about treatment, uh, you know, as I said earlier, this is uh, used to be a fatal disease. People won't survive more than two to three years. I'm talking about 20, 30 years ago. And the only treatment back then was lung transplant, which is really uh, uh, life-saving, but it is very cumbersome and uh, challenging. And uh, luckily nowadays, we have many different treatment that comes in a pill form, an injectable form, and in some inhalation. So w we are living in a time where the disease has transformed significantly in terms of the ability of a patient to live a, a better life, able to function. Uh, and I'm just reminding the audience how the disease can impact patients with, this, uh, with pulmonary hypertension. This disease tends to progress with time. The patient will have some shortness of breath doing heavy exertion. Over time, that becomes a heavy exertion or a breathing difficulty doing minimal thing. I'm talking about walking to the bathroom, uh, an ability to lift anything cannot walk any stairs or any distances, then they start having to use oxygen. And if this left without treatment, the patient will end up with what we call heart failure. And that carries a very high risk of dying from the disease. So when a patient is diagnosed, we once we define the specific type of pulmonary hypertension, we put the patient on oral medications, uh, pills that he takes, and they need very close monitoring or follow-up uh, in the in the clinic to assess whether the patient is responding or not. And if they are responding and we achieve our objective, that is their, their heart is in good shape, it's not struggling, and the patient is able to live a, a, a quality life where they're able to function and exercise with minimal to no limitation, then we are in good place. But unfortunately, many patients will have a bit of varying responses. Some patient will improve, some patient may improve partially, some patient may not improve. And that where a pulmonary hypertension like ours can provide that extra layer of services more than just pills where we can help the patient uh, achieve a better life. Uh, just kind of going over some of those things is uh, we, we, uh, we can provide a continuous infusion of this medication, which is very cumbersome and requires a lot of expertise to do this treatment. It requires a, a, a pump that infuses certain medications through an IV, and that patient needs to follow up closely with our center and get evaluated. Um, some patients, despite all these treatments, they have disease progression. And uh, luckily, uh, at Cleveland Clinic Abu Dhabi, we have a lung transplant program which can provide a life-saving intervention to prevent death in this disease. And it's very critical that we evaluate those patients early before they are out of the window for lung transplant. So it's important to, to consider that. But also, not just lung transplant, you know, having a patient who is very sick with pulmonary hypertension, when they come to Cleveland Clinic Abu Dhabi, they can uh, uh, be offered different therapies. And I'm going to kind of uh, walk I'll let you introduce that concept of how much we can support these patients with different devices and heart and lung transplant. Absolutely, and thank you so much again for uh, for an excellent description regarding the devices and the advanced circulatory support that we have. Uh, it's a it's a huge spectrum. We have. Uh, for the left ventricle, left side of the heart, the circulatory support devices. We have the uh, 
overall uh, ECMO program. We have the circulatory support devices uh, that extend actually beyond just the devices to the heart, heart transplant program, uh, left ventricular acid devices program, uh, implanting the devices that help these patients survive longer and feel better over the long term. We work very closely with, uh, uh, with cardiology, pulmonology, our critical care ICU teams, cardiac surgery team, thoracic surgery team. So it's a overall comprehensive team taking care of and uh, we have had uh, excellent uh, outcomes and, and, and great patient feedback. Excellent, excellent. One more group of patients that is very unique to Cleveland Clinic Abu Dhabi is the so-called chronic thromboembolic pulmonary hypertension. And this is really an interesting disease because uh, I think it's very com it's common and very frequently unrecognized. And the reason I mention that because this is... Uh, potentially curable disease. And it's really important that we bring this diagnosis or awareness of the disease to the population so they understand. So what is this chronic thrombomolic pulmonary hypertension? It's a, a, a complication of uh, uh, pulmonary emboli, blood clots going to the lung for some reason or other, very small percentage of patients, around 4% of, of the patient with acute uh, pulmonary embolism, the clot doesn't go away and it turns into a scar tissue that blocks the blood vessel. And uh, those patients, if, uh, if we don't treat them, they have the same bad survival like any other patient with pulmonary hypertension, even worse. The good news is there is a cure. I didn't mention any cure about pulmonary hypertension in general, but this type, it can be potentially cured by a very complex and unique surgical procedure called pulmonary endarterectomy, which a, a surgeon go in and remove that old scar from multiple vessels in the, uh, in the arteries, in the, in the lungs, and that opens the blood flow and the patient goes back to normal life, not requiring much treatment other than blood clotting uh, prevention. And uh, the, the thing I can uh, you know, share with the audience is that this is a very unique surgery that's available in very few centers around the world, and we're lucky to be part of those few centers. We will be able to provide that unique ser service to these patients. And, and, and as you know, like before we uh, send these patients and decide about the surgeries or this intervention, it requires a very meticulous, very comprehensive workup assessing the patient. Is this the patient right candidate or not, which requires a lot of teamwork? What do you think how much, uh, how much uh, work goes into that before sending that patient eventually for that? Yes, surgery? And that, that's a great question. Thank you. So as you know, these patients can be very, very complex. And sometimes who would benefit from surgery, who would benefit from treatment is a complex and luckily we have uh, what we call multidisciplinary team that we all meet together on a regular basis and review all the data on different patients. And based on that, we feel like based on the expert collective wisdom that the patient, the patient would benefit from a surgical treatment versus medical treatment. And I, I'm just trying to put this in a bigger even context. If a patient with pulmonary hypertension comes to Cleveland Clinic Abu Dhabi, the good thing is they can receive every aspect you can think of treatment for this disease, including this unique surgical intervention, medical therapy, and even transplant, whether it's heart or lung transplant. So it is exciting to be part of this team and uh, you know, be able to help patients with this really devastating disease. And, uh, you know, uh, and I, I thank you for you know, helping me present this disease to the to the to the, to the in this podcast and uh, and uh, at this time I would like to thank you for listening uh, to this podcast and um, I hope to see you in the second uh, next episode uh, soon stay safe stay healthy and thank you thank you very much